This is a combination of two exercises. Exercise 17.4.1a, Creating Dimensional Constraints, and 17.4.2a, Managing Dimensional Constraints with Constraint Settings. I'm in the DIM-CONST drawing file in the Steps Lesson 17 folder. What we have is simply four lines and a circle. We'll start by moving, the moving one of the lines to the right. Notice that the line moves, there are no attachments, and nothing affects, the line does not affect anything else. So let's undo that move. We will open the Auto Constraint tab of the Constraint Settings dialog box. like so, the Auto Constraints tab. Be sure that everything is selected and OK it. And now we'll auto constrain the rectangle and the circle, like so. Now we can hide the constraint bars if they get in our way. Just hide them so that they're not bothering us. Now, let's repeat step one, where we move the line. Notice this time, first when you select the line, notice that the hidden bars come back. But notice that when I move the line, not only does the line move, the rectangle adjust, but the dimension also adjusts. Let's undo that. Now let's add some dimensional constraints. We want to use annotational dimensional constraints. So we'll begin by setting the system variable. C constraint form to 1. That'll give us annotational dimensional constraints. Now the 6 inch dimension that we have is just a dimension, as is the 4 inch. What we're going to do now is under the dim constraint command, select the convert option, and convert that 6 inch dimension into a dimensional constraint. Notice the formula. The D1 is actually the name of the dimension now. We'll discuss what you can do with this in the remainder of this chapter. Let's add a horizontal dimensional constraint. from that line to the center of our circle. Like so. Notice it also has a formula. In this case, the name of this dimension is D2. Now, let's move the line again, but let's do it this time by changing the value of the dimension. I'll double click on the dimension value, dimension text and I'll change the 6 to a 7. Notice that the circle stayed 3 inches from the line that I just moved. Let's undo that change. Moving on to the next exercise, 17.4.2a. Double click on the D2 dimension. What we want to do here is use the names of these dimensions to control what happens. So instead of D2 equals 3, we're going to set D2 equal to D1 divided by 2 and hit enter. Now, by default, D2 is actually 3 because that's half of 6. But if I come and I change my value of D1 to 7, the value of D2 remains half of D1, and the circle adjusts accordingly. If we open our 
Constraint Settings dialog box and we go to the Dimensional tab and change this, this setting, the constraint format, to Value Only and OK it. You can see that now we actually have numbers. Let's save the drawing file and we'll work more on that in another exercise. At this point you should go on to exercise 17.4.3a, Managing Parameters.